Hello, welcome back. My name is Katie. I am so excited to do this video because this is one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube. So today I'm going to be giving you recommendations based on other books. So if you liked one of these, I think you will also really enjoy the other one. I have so many recommendations. Let's get into it. The first recommendation I have is based off of Daisy Jones and the Six. If you have ever wished that Daisy Jones and the Six was based on a real band, this is the book for you. Rat Girl by Christian Hirsch is a memoir by the lead singer of Throwing Muses. Christian Hirsch is an amazing writer, an amazing lyricist, and you get all of those things just like you do in Daisy Jones and the Six, where she's talking about where certain lyrics came from and what mental state she was in when she came up with them. This book is centered on one year of Christian Hirsch's life when she is 18. It's talking about mental health, motherhood, and music. I have never ever seen anyone talk about this book and it is one of my favorite things I have ever read. So if you like Daisy Jones and the Six or even if you didn't like it, the ending really got me. But otherwise I was wanting more from the book I think because I had read this and it does a similar thing but it's real life and it just feels much more impactful. So Rat Girl is my recommendation to you. I love both of these books and I think if you liked one, you'll really like the other. Hopefully you haven't already read both of them because they're both pretty popular, but they are Watch Over Me and Every Heart a Doorway. I think Every Heart a Doorway, the Wayward Children series, is a little bit more popular than Watch Over Me, but this is actually my favorite of the two. So I am going to recommend Watch Over Me if you like this series. This is about children who find doors to other realms. When they end up back in our world, they are trying to process being locked out of what was essentially their home and nobody believing them about that whole time in their lives. It's basically a bunch of kids in a home who are trying to heal from their trauma, which is what Watch Over Me is as well. This is about Mila. She has just aged out of the foster care system and she goes to work on a farm as a teacher for children. These children are all trying to heal from trauma, Mila herself included, and there are little ghosties here. It is dealing with some really intense subject matter, but the whole book feels very cozy. Everyone at this farm feels very loved. It's just a really incredible story about people intentionally trying to work through the bad things that happen to them and help each other feel better. I love this book. So if you liked that aspect of this series, I think you'll really like Watch Over Me. The next recommendation I have is based off of Follow Me to Ground. This is about Ada and her father. They are not quite human and they spend their days curing humans of disease by magically opening them up and pulling out the sickness or illness that is inside of them. The book I'm going to recommend based on this is Frankenstein. These two books are surprisingly really similar. They're both gothic in tone. There's this general sense of uneasiness. They both have this incredible nature imagery. The nature in both of these books is incredibly powerful. And there's this really interesting juxtaposition of the power of the nature and the power of the people or not quite people. Um, if you don't know, Frankenstein is the story of Victor Frankenstein. He becomes a scientist, he's studying, and he creates a monster from cadaver pieces and basically shuns the monster. He's so horrified at what he's created. It's the monster's story, it's Victor's story, it's one of my favorite books of all time. If classics are intimidating, but you liked Follow Me to Ground, I think you will really, really enjoy Frankenstein. Both of these books are talking about what it means to be created and born and what we owe to each other. And also this idea of just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should. Really incredible books. If you've read one of them, I think you'll like the other. Okay, <laughs> I really thought I would hate both of these books. This is the one I have seen around the most, it's The Defining Decade, Why Your 20s Matter, and How to Make the Most of Them Now. It sounds really self-helpy, but I promise it's not. The author is a psychologist. She has a practice where she works with 20-somethings and helps them with their lives through therapy. 
It really feels like you're sitting down with an expert therapist and she's telling you what you need to make your life better. One of the things she talks about in here is relationships and being intentional about the relationships that you're in. One of the studies she quotes in here is discussed more in depth in the book I'm going to recommend to you if you liked this, which is How to Not Die Alone. Again, I thought I would hate this book, but it is one of my favorite things I have read this year. It quotes a ton of studies. It is really based in data and it's talking about how to be intentional about dating, getting into a relationship, moving in together, getting engaged, getting married, having kids. It's basically a manual for how to be a decent human while being intimate with someone else. It kicked me in the butt when I needed to be kicked in the butt and just felt very similar to this. Like I'm sitting down with an expert, they're telling me what I need to hear and I can take these lessons and apply them to my life right away. Love both of these books. If you liked one of them, please read the other one. Okay, the next two books I'm gonna recommend together. They are The Alchemist and The Old Man and the Sea. If you like books that are parable, allegory, a short, engaging story that makes you think big questions about your own life and the human condition, both of these books have a very similar tone in my mind, which was kind of surprising to me because I think of them as two completely different categories. Like The Old Man and the Sea is very much a classic. The Alchemist is kind of a modern classic, but it is kind of that more self-helpy brand that I generally don't connect with, but I've read The Alchemist three times and every time I get something else out of it, it's just one of those books that works for me. And I think the tone of these is really similar. I do have to say, if you read The Old Man on the Sea, the audiobook is really, really good. This is my dad's favorite book and he recommended that I read the audiobook and I'm so glad that I listened to him. The audiobook is incredible. It really captures the old man's voice and presence. So if you've read one of these and you liked them, I think you'll get something different out of the other one. They're not telling the same message by any means. They both have very different things that they're trying to portray but they're saying them in a very similar way. Okay, so... um. Now I have some murdery, serial killery recommendations for you. So the book that I've seen around the most is The One. If you haven't read The One, but you like Black Mirror, it really reads like a Black Mirror episode to me. So I think you'll really like it if you enjoy Black Mirror. The One puts us in a world that is near future that has been changed by a piece of technology. And that technology is a DNA match service that will match you with your one true soulmate with just a swab of your cheek. This concept is really interesting and I have seen it done a few times in TV and movies and books and I just think it's a really cool concept. The one follows many different perspectives and I am going to talk about one of the perspectives in here. So if you don't want any spoilers at all on who any of the people in the book are, skip this one, go to the next recommendation. I'm not gonna be spoiling anything big. I'm just gonna be telling you who one of the perspectives that we get is. I knew this before I started reading it and it didn't really change my enjoyment of the book at all. One of the perspectives that we get in the one is a serial killer. Their perspective was one of my favorite things about this book being inside the mind of somebody who commits murders will never not be interesting to me. So I have some recommendations based on that. If you liked being in the head of a serial killer, you should read The Killer Inside Me by Jim Thompson. I read this book ages ago and I still remember really weird details about it and exactly where I was, where I read it. It's one of those things that sticks with you. If you like the psychology of figuring out why people are doing things and there's a lot of different mysteries in here too, I think you'll really enjoy this book. If you liked the psychology aspect of the murderer grappling with whether or not they are doing the right thing and if they should continue killing, I think you'll really enjoy Crime and Punishment. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Again, a classic that can feel really unaccessible. If you like psychology, I think you'll love this. This is about Raskolnikov and he commits a murder that he thinks he is super justified in doing. He does not think that there is any problem with 
him murdering this person. But then this murder doesn't really go to plan and the aftermath, figuring out if this new version of himself was still justified in killing, he becomes really fractured and paranoid and you kind of see his mind being crushed under the weight of what he's done. Also, there is an interesting killer police series of interactions in here. So if you liked that aspect of the one, I think you'll also like it in here. This book is a masterpiece. I love it. The only thing I don't like about this book is the ending. I absolutely hate the ending. I would love if someone would rewrite the ending, but otherwise it's amazing. Okay, and then if you liked the parts in the one where these people who are doing horrible things feel like they're super justified in what they're doing, also, if you've read Crime and Punishment and you liked the parts where Raskolnikov is thinking that he's super justified in what he's doing, I think you'll really love For Your Own Good. It's such a good book. The tone of this book is so good. Oh, I love it so much. Well, our main character is Teddy. He's a teacher at this prestigious prep school and he hates the entitlement and the privilege that his students and their parents have. And so he does all of these really questionable things. This book escalates so quickly and he says he's doing all of these things for their own good. There's also a large cast of characters in this. So if you like that aspect of the one, I think you'll really enjoy it and for your own good too. I had no idea what any of these characters were going to do at any point in the book. It was just so good. I can't talk about serial killers without mentioning my sister, the serial killer. So if you like books like that, this is the story of a woman who is basically helping her sister cover up these murders that she has done. Her sister says that it is in self-defense, but she starts to think, as this keeps happening, is my sister a serial killer? read this book to find out. <laughs> so those are all of my serial killer murder recommendations. The next recommendation I have is another nonfiction. I've seen Unwell Women going around a lot recently. This is a really deep dive into all of the awful ways that the healthcare system has failed women. If you liked Unwell Women, please, 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 please read Invisible Women. Even if you didn't enjoy Unwell Women, but you enjoy the concept of Unwell Women, I think Invisible Women does this, does a similar concept so well. Invisible Women is about the data gender gap and the bias of so many different systems in our lives, whether that be our cars, our healthcare system, our schedule for snow clearing. It talks about how all of those different systems are made with the assumption that male is default. So everything should be built to the standards that are good for men. The section on clinical trials absolutely blew my mind. I cannot believe that women do not even factor into the conversation until much later stages in trials. So we're missing, so we could be missing out on so many drugs that only work for women that don't work for men because we don't use female animals in clinical trials. Just absolutely blew my mind. <laughs> so if you like the concept of unwell women, I think you will really enjoy Invisible Women. I read Invisible Women first and then picked up Unwell Women because I loved the medical parts of Invisible Women so much. I'm really glad I read Unwell Women, but I did like Invisible Women more. It is a five star. I think you will really enjoy it. Okay, I have some recommendations for Sally Rooney books. So if you like Sally Rooney, I think you should read both of these books, but I'm going to give you a recommendation for both conversations with friends and normal people. So if conversations with friends is your favorite Sally Rooney, I think you will really enjoy The Adulterants. This book has a tone that is very similar to Fleabag. They're, the people in this book are pretty awful. It feels like conversations with friends and Fleabag had a little book baby. There is a party dinner party scene that reminds me a lot of those scenes and conversations with friends. The actions that our characters take are very similar. So if you liked the people doing awful things and not being able to not do them sort of situation, I think you'll really like the adulterants. If normal people is your favorite Sally Rooney, then I think you will really like animals. This is about two women who are being wild, going out a lot, drinking a lot. One of them is an aspiring writer. It is simultaneously incredibly fun and also really serious. 
and literary. It's incredible, reminds me a lot of Sally Rooney's writing style and normal people, especially with this book element in it. So if normal people is your favorite Sally Rooney, I think I really enjoy animals. I am so excited to talk about this last book. If you like House of Leaves, please, 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 please read the raw shark texts. I love this book so much. Bonus recommendation, if you like Jaws and House of Leaves, this is your perfect book. Here it is, it's for you. The Raw Shark Texts does for conceptual theory and language and memory what House of Leaves did for darkness and sight and blindness and seeing. These books are both so masterfully written. They both have a love story in them. They both are actually, the physical books themselves are a very similar size and shape. And this also does have the weird structure in it that um, House of Leaves does, not as much as Mark Danieleski, but I will show you. There is a little sharky in here made out of text. This book is about Eric Sanderson. He wakes up one day with none of his memories and gets this letter. First things first, stay calm. If you are reading this, I'm not around anymore. Take the phone and speed dial one. Tell the woman who answers that you are Eric Sanderson. The woman is Dr. Randall. She'll understand what has happened and you'll be able to see her straight away. Take the car keys and drive the yellow Jeep to Dr. Randall's house. If you haven't found it yet, there's a map in the envelope. It isn't too far and it's not hard to find. Dr. Randall will be able to answer all your questions. It's very important that you go straight away. Do not pass go, do not explore, do not collect 200 pounds. The house keys are hanging from a nail on the banister at the bottom of the stairs. Don't forget them. With regret and also hope, the first Eric Sanderson. So he wakes up with no memories, gets this letter from himself. And throughout the book, he's being chased by a conceptual thought shark. Just like House of Leaves, very big brain energy. I love this book so much. So if you like House of Leaves and you've been searching for something to scratch that itch and you can't find it, just like I have been searching, I finally found it. It's the raw shark text. Please read this book. Okay, those are all of my recommendations. I hope you found a new book to add to your TBR or something on your shelf that you're gonna pick up next. If you like this video, please give it a like and let me know why in the comments so I can keep making more content like it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really love making videos and you being here watching me ramble on about books. It's just so exciting. If you liked this video, I think you'll like this one. And if you want to stick around and hear me gush about books some more, please consider subscribing. I will be posting every other Tuesday and every Friday now. So that'll be one extra video every other week. So I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.